Hi, mamas. So I am back with a pregnancy update. Right now, I am eight and a half months pregnant. And if you read the title, then you already know that so far in the pregnancy, I have gained nine pounds. So I definitely wanna talk about that. I know that pregnancy and weight gain, or just weight in general, can be very triggering for a lot of people. But I think it's important to have a space where we feel comfortable having discussions about you know, what happened, what we're doing, why it works for us, why it might not work for someone else, and so on and so forth. So if weight gain and pregnancy is extremely triggering for you and you just, it just makes you upset, you don't wanna talk about it, this is probably not the video for you, okay? But if you are a person who is interested in understanding why I've gained nine pounds so far and I'm eight and a half months pregnant, what I ate, what I did, just keep watching and I'll share everything with you. Okay, so this is one of those talking head videos. So I'm gonna just be coming straight at you as a friend, giving you information and sharing um, a piece of my pregnancy life with you. I am eight and a half months pregnant with a baby girl. <laughs> I'm very excited. This is my fourth child. So um, after she is born, I will have two boys and two girls, all roughly two years apart. Yes, yeah, so I've been bit, I've been pregnant for a long period of time um, over the last <laughs> six seven years. I want to talk about pregnancy and weight gain because that's actually how I started this channel, and it has actually been a very. Um, <sighs> It's just been a very sensitive space for me learning so much because when I got pregnant with my first son, I was a really petite girl. I never had any weight issues, so I didn't know what to expect, but I certainly didn't expect for 53 pounds to come and play with me during the pregnancy. I'm getting all types of text messages. So, so because um, I had all that weight gain and I had gestational diabetes and gaining excessive weight can make that more of a problem. And my next pregnancy, I was very mindful of it. And I'll leave some links to some of my old pregnancy videos called my skinny pregnancy journey um, on here. But I was very adamant about controlling my weight um, and controlling what I put into my body so that I would not gain as much weight. And I didn't, I gained about 22 pounds. So less than half of what I gained the previous pregnancy. Um, during the third pregnancy, I actually didn't care about what I ate and didn't work out and didn't implement any of my rules that I have for myself for my second pregnancy. And what happened? I gained 50 pounds again. So this really did make a huge difference. These eating habits and being mindful. And in this pregnancy, I implemented some of those rules and was able to gain so far nine pounds. Now, here's the difference between this pregnancy and all of my others. I was significantly overweight compared to my other pregnancies. My BMI was a 30.0, which according to the CDC is obese. And I was like, dang, I'm obese? That is such a strong word. <laughs> I was cool with actually using like chubby, fat, overweight for myself, but obese really felt medical, like just like really, really dangerous space for me to be in health wise. To be honest, it, it can be. So I definitely looked at the recommendations and talked to my doctor and she really suggested that I work out every day and just be mindful. Uh, they were pretty sure that I was gonna get diabetes, gestational diabetes because of this. Um, but I was so, I'm telling you, I was so clear. I knew what I needed to do. I did not get gestational diabetes in my second pregnancy when I controlled what I ate and did and I got gestational diabetes in the other two pregnancies where I did not. So this actually makes a significant change. And in this pregnancy, I did not get gestational diabetes. Really quick fun facts about gestational diabetes. It is something that a small percentage of women get. They are genetically predisposed to getting it. So my sister got gestational diabetes. Um, diabetes does run in my family. So I am more likely to gain that diagnosis of gestational diabetes when I am pregnant than you know, some other women. However, that does not mean that I am genetically destined to get gestational diabetes because as I have shared with you, 
50% of the time, I don't get it. And during that time, it's not by accident. It's not random. I literally gain less weight and do specific things that I'm about to share with you that cause me to gain the non-diagnosis and less weight. So let's actually just go ahead and get into that because I know this is probably the most important part. Diet plays the biggest part of avoiding excessive weight gain. For me, this could be different for everyone, so please check with your own dietitians, nutritionist, um, holistic doctors, midwives, whomever you trust to guide you personally to check and see where you're sensitive. For me, I'm sensitive when it comes to glucose, sugar. My body just doesn't know how to act when I am pregnant and introduced to high levels of sugar within each meal. And I'm also noticing non-pregnant as well. So I'll be implementing these type of rules for when I'm trying to lose weight postpartum. But I can't just sit and eat um, a meal that has 50 plus grams of carbohydrates in it. And you would be surprised, okay, how quickly you can get to 50 grams. You don't have to sit there and eat a whole piece of, a whole cake um, to get to 50 grams of sugar. A lot of these starches and sugars are hidden. Um, fruit as well. I can't just sit and eat two, three, four, five bananas. Like I'm the banana girl. I can't do that because my sugar will elevate and my body will store excessive fat and it's actually not healthy for me. So because I knew that, I paid very close attention to my macronutrients, my proteins, my fats, and my carbohydrates. I did not eliminate any of them. I don't believe in that. However, I did pay close attention by putting all of my meals in an app called Lose It. The purpose of the app obviously is to lose weight. However, I'm pregnant, that's not my purpose. But my purpose was to see the percentage of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins that I had every single day. So I will put it in this app and it would tell me how many, you know, everything, the carbs, how many grams per meal. It gave me all the data I needed. And I remember, I think it was in the book, The Compound Effect, where they talked about tracking. It was either The Compound Effect or The um, Atomic Habits, because those books about habit formations I, I love, I love those. So it talks about that and the reality is it is very hard to make any decisions without any data. I like research, I like data, I like graphs, I like stats, okay? And from there I can make real decisions about what I need to do for my body. If I'm just guessing how many carbs I had or guessing what uh, percentage it might be, I am really shortchanging myself because honestly, I personally was guessing days that I went over, I would have guessed that I was okay and that I was fine when I really went way too far. So you have to be honest with yourself and if it takes tracking, which up front can sound very um, irritating and take away the experience of food, but if food turns from being your fuel to being your enemy, you do need to address that and you can't let your feelings around um, feel good comfort foods and the addiction that some foods have, you know, continue to help you make poor decisions for yourself. And that's plain and simple, right? So that's what I did. I stopped being, you know, soft on myself and started to really get the data. And now I'm kind of like, tracking my food without even thinking about it. Um, it's just my phone is near me when I eat and I just plug it in and call it a day. It's really like a two second thing. And for me, I have learned that in this pregnancy, I have to start the day off mainly with protein and fat. So usually I eat about the same thing for breakfast and lunch every day, excluding the weekends. But um, I have this protein shake where I'm making sure that I really get in all of the proteins that I need. Like I'm pitting my target for the day as far as grams of protein. Um, and that is really helpful to me. So I kind of start my day off there instead of starting my day off with oatmeal or some type of carbohydrate because for some reason my body doesn't like it. You know, so I have to be honest. Okay, my body doesn't like it, it's fine. I will go ahead and start the day with a protein. The next thing that I do is make sure that I'm having a nice healthy fat. So I usually go with 
avocados for lunch and then I'll have like a glowing glowing smoothie um, a salad sometimes I'll have that as avocado toast so there are some carbohydrates mixed in with that as well and I usually have an avocado every day for lunch um, it's super healthy very calorie dense you would be surprised seeing a person eat one avocado they're taking in like 300 some odd calories <laughs> so it's actually not you know a dieter's food and that's not what I'm going for I'm not trying to be on a diet however I am trying to make sure that I'm giving my body the support that it needs without giving it excess calories and excess glucose that causes my body to actually lose its mind gain a lot of weight get gestational diabetes and you know threaten my baby having hypoglycemia after birth you know these are real issues so it's not just about vanity but let's be honest weight is an indicator for something being right or wrong that's why they weigh you every time you go into your prenatal appointments because they need to track how much you are gaining and how rapidly you're gaining it because it can be a signal to something being very incorrect so that is why I think that it's extremely important for women to not feel ashamed to talk about weight especially during pregnancy and um i did want to talk about yeah the fact that i gained only nine pounds that is good for me the cdc because i am 30.0 <laughs> on the bmi scale um it is suggested that i gained between 11 and 20 pounds during pregnancy so I am on track to getting into that range for the entire pregnancy which is healthy for me and my baby exceeding that would actually be a little bit unhealthy for us and also I just stayed active I moved my body I did work out but also some days I didn't and on the days that I didn't oh you know, I have other I have kids <laughs> I'm moving around I am cleaning my home I am moving my body at least 30 minutes a day um, regardless and it doesn't have to be something that is a specific workout but I do have workouts that I like I did share that in my other pregnancy update video I will leave a link as well for that I also still have treats during the weekend I have had pizza <laughs> I have had other items and I don't feel deprived so I know I have talked a lot in this video <laughs> But I hope that you found some value in it and I hope that you are happy on your pregnancy journey. So far the baby is measuring right on schedule and um, I don't have any crazy symptoms yet other than pregnancy insomnia. Like I cannot sleep at night. I am recording this video at night in the middle of the night. <laughs> I can't sleep and that is probably my biggest issue. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. I need to cut it now. I know it's super long, but I will see you guys in the next video and we will be updating some more. And also I will be sharing with you guys what I'm teaching my four-year-old. So you get to see my entire thing that I like to teach her. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy those videos coming up soon. And if you aren't subscribed, subscribe now. Lots more to come. Talk to you then, bye.